Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. We're continuing with the topic of instruments of the orchestra on page 63 of the Grade 5 Discovering Music Theory Workbook. And in this little information box here, we get to look a little bit more closely at the instruments of the woodwind section. And so some instruments don't have reeds, for example, the flute and the piccolo. Other instruments do have reeds, which is kind of this fibrous kind of wooden slither as it were and some have a single reed like the clarinet shown here just one reed braced against the instrument and others have a double reed where they have two thin pieces of wood that vib that you blow down and they vibrate against each other to create the sound so that the clarinet is a single reed and the double reed instruments are the oboe the core anglais, which are kind of the same family, and the bassoon as well, which is the bass instrument. And we discussed the instruments in the previous lesson, and we get the opportunity to just test ourselves and revise what we've learned so far. And perhaps it might be an idea to just try this without looking at the answers first of all so maybe just press pause and just try and answer these because it's okay to get it wrong we can always just erase it and have another go oh got erase it everywhere there and it's much better to learn more actively that way than just passively copying and again I do recommend that you listen to some orchestral music and if you can even watch the orchestra there are pl plenty of videos available and if you can see one live well even better and so let's now try these together hoping that you've had a go so the first question is which instrument is a smaller relative of the flute and that's the piccolo which is like a miniature version of the flute. It's a miniature version in size and it plays much much higher. It's higher than the flute and it plays an octave higher than written. Let's look at the next one. So to which instrument is the cor anglais related? Well we've already discussed this. This is the oboe which both of these are double reed instruments and they both belong to the same family. Cor anglais is English horn, but that's more to do with the heritage of the instrument rather than it being part of the brass family. It's a woodwind instrument. So to which orchestral family does the harp belong? Well, if you picture the harp, you can see that there are lots and lots of downward strings that are plucked, and so it's obviously a string instrument. And then we asked, which woodwind instrument uses a single reed? Well, we've seen that at the top of the page, and that's the clarinet. Interestingly, the piccolo and the oboe are concert pitch instruments. That means that when they play a C, a C is sounded. The cor anglais is not, that transposes. So when you play a C, actually it sounds an F. We will get more into that, just the way the instrument is made and tuned. And the clarinet is also a, a transposing instrument, so it will play a C. And if it's a B-flat clarinet, it will sound a B-flat. It actually sounds a tone lower, which is why we have to do all of the transposition to compensate for the variety of tunings of these instruments. So we will look at that a little bit more in later lessons, but just a little heads up just out of information. A lot of the new instruments in grade five are the percussion instruments, so we get to look at these in a little bit more detail now. 
and we need to say whether these instruments are definite pitch or you would say tuned or on indefinite pitch untuned as in definite pitch tuned plays a melody indefinite pitch or untuned you can't play a melody it's just a kind of a crash or a, a ting or a bang or goodness knows what you could have duck cries and whistles and all sorts going on uh, it's I absolutely love the percussion section I think it looks great fun although quite stressful jumping around on all of these different instruments so the bass drum that is indefinite pitch because we just kind of give it a, a bang and we get kind of a, a beat as it were the side drum that also is indefinite pitch like a snare as well or the or um the side drum, I think the snare is part of the drum kit. The side drum is an orchestral kind of version. And I think it's the side drum that repeats over and over and over again when we hear Rival's Bolero. That's the one, I think. The triangle just gives us a ting. We can't play a melody. And so again, that is indefinite pitch. Now the xylophone... That's the instrument where we have a row of wooden bars decreasing in size and we can play melodies and it's amazing what percussionists do with these. They have kind of two beaters in each hand and play the most amazing melodies with four sticks going on. So that is definite pitch because we can play a melody that is tuned. So if you get the gist, perhaps now you can continue. Try these on your own. So I'm hoping you've tried the rest of this. Let's now work through these final examples together. So here we have the Celesta or the Celesta. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm not entirely sure. This is the one that can, it sounds very music boxy, very um, much the Harry Potter Hedwig's theme now. And it gives it that kind of glassy, tinkly sound because hammers hit metal bars inside the instrument so it looks like a piano but the mechanism hits metal bars rather than uh, strings on the piano and it also gets that kind of tinkly music box sound because it's metal bars rather than kind of tubes it's it's not kind of echoey and so that is definite pitch the tambourine, kind of let your hair down and have a go, actually um, in an orchestral setting it, it's quite effective but you can only play one kind of jangly sound, it's indefinite pitch. Castanets, our sort of Spanish, is, that, is it flamenco? I might be confusing but to me, you know, you can just picture the traditional Spanish dress and the dance going on, can't you? However, you don't play a melody and so it's indefinite pitch. The timpani can also be called the kettle drum. Now this is the one where it's perhaps easy to get confused because you think, oh, it's a drum and so... Um, it must be indefinite, but actually it's a definite pitch, it's a tuned, and it's usually tuned to the tonic or, and the dominant. So you get a one, five, one, five, really bassy beating there. It's really distinctive, you sort of feel it in your boots. Oftentimes, if you've got the luxury, um, There'll be two kettle drums, one tuned to tonic, one tuned to dominant, if you can afford the luxury of two timpani. However, I have known of, of occasions in sort of amateur orchestras where they'd only got one sort of limping along timp. I suppose they must be very expensive. And so the percussionist had to do a frantic... Uh, tuning while the rest of the orchestra was playing so they'd play their tonic note for example and then they got a few beats to quickly tune and just sort of silently tap and listen very quietly under the orchestra's 
noise and then be ready to play the dominant and then quickly tune it back again uh, if you've not got the luxury of two timps there. But anyway, it is tuned. It's a definite pitch because we can have those different tones. I mean, they can tune it to anything, of course. It's just that's the usual effect. The marimba is like a xylophone. However, it's got bigger tubes rather than bars and that gives it more resonance and they tend to use softer mallets as well for a different effect but we can definitely play tunes on that, it's definite pitch and then the tam-tam is a gong type instrument so you just get a kind of a, a, a bang and a crash as it were sort of heralding a certain point in the music and again I always feel sorry for the percussionists because they've probably had 27 bars rest and you've got to count like crazy to make sure that you give this great big crash on the appropriate beat. Come in late, it's terrible. Miss it, it's terrible. And so that is indefinite pitch. That's an untuned percussion. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.